essence of a capitalist system in its pure form is that it is a system of cooperation without compulsion, of voluntary exchange, of free enterprise. Now I hasten to add, no actual system conforms to that notion. In the actual world, you're always dealing with approximations, with more or less. In the actual world, you always have impediments and interferences to voluntary exchange. But the essential character of a capitalist system is that it relies on voluntary exchange, on your agreeing with me that you will buy something from me if I will pay you a certain amount for it. The essential notion is that both parties to the exchange must benefit. This was a great vision of Adam Smith in his Wealth of Nations, that individuals each separately pursuing their own self-interest could promote the social interest because you could get exchange between people on the basis of mutual benefit. Now, I want to emphasize to you here for this purpose that this notion extends far beyond economic matters narrowly conceived. That's really the main point I want to get across here. And I want to give you some very different kinds of examples. Consider the development of language, the English language. There was never any central government that dictated the English language that set up some rules for it. There was no planning board that determined what words should be nouns and what words vowels and I mean what words adjectives. Language grew through the free market, through voluntary cooperation. I used a word, you used a word. If it was mutually advantageous to us to keep on using that word, we keep on using it. Language grows, it develops, it expands, it contracts through the free market. Consider the body of common law, not legislated law, which is a very different thing, but the body of common law. People voluntarily chose to go to a court and allow the court to adjudicate their dispute. In the process, there arose and developed the body of common law. Again, no central plan, no central coordination. You are here in an academic institution. How did scientific knowledge and understanding arise? How do we get the development of science? Is there somehow or other a government agency that decides what are the most important problems to be studied that prevents cooperation? Unfortunately, there are developing such agencies. But in the history of science, that isn't the way science developed. Science developed out of free market exchange. It developed on occasion with the patronage of an authority. But voluntary cooperation among the scientists. I read voluntarily the work that is done by economists in other lands. They read my work. They take the parts of it they like. They discard the parts they don't. In the process, you build a more and more complicated system through voluntary, free voluntary exchange based on the principle of mutual benefit. What most people are objecting to is that the market gives people what the people want instead of what the person talking thinks the people ought to want. This is true. Whether you are ta talking of the objections of a Galbraith to the market, whether you are talking of the objections of a Nader to the market, whether you are talking of the objections of a Marx or an Engels or a Lenin to the market. The problem is that in a market society, in a society in which people are free to do their own thing, in which people make voluntary deals, it's hard to do good. You've got to persuade people, and there's nothing in this world harder. But the important thing is that in that kind of society, it's also hard to do harm. It's true that if you had a concentrated power in the hands of an angel, he might be able to do a lot of good, as he viewed it. But one man's good is another man's bad. And the great virtue of a market capitalist society is that it pre by preventing a concentration of power, it prevents people from doing the kind of harm which really concentrated power can do.